What's up with it? What's up with it, man? It's the Bronco with the Fro coming at you with another reaction video, and it's about time I'm about to dive in and strap up, and I'm about to finally go ahead and learn about this European football, man. It's about time that I become a fan of this sport. Understanding European soccer in four simple steps. I got the binoculars on, man. I got my notebook. A guy for Americanos. I'm finna start following real closely. Oh, yeah. I heard that boy Messi and Ronaldo played each other yesterday or the other day. And I heard Ronaldo and him <laughs> smacking that ass, smacking that ass on my mama. That boy Messi and him scored a donut. Zero points. I'm like, Messi. You only score zero points, man. You got people telling me Messi to go. You got people telling me Ronaldo to go. And I'd be like, oh, okay, Messi is the go. But then I see some Ronaldo highlights. I'm like, oh, Ronaldo is the go. Then I see some Messi highlights. Oh, Messi to go. I see some Ronaldo highlights. Oh, Ronaldo is the go. Then I seen Ronaldo then put up three points today. Zero. I say, ooh, Ronaldo getting up there. He getting up there. So right now, Ronaldo is higher on my list, man. But yeah. Let's see what goes down. Got Welcome my pen. To understanding soccer Ready to learn. In four simple steps. A guide for Americans. Okay. Although from the outside it may seem complex and confusing, to understand it is complex. In Europe, you really only need to know four things. Four things. Number one, each country has its own soccer league. Oh, Seasons really? run from August to May, in which each team plays every other team twice, once at home and once on the road. Games are divided into two 45-minute halves. When the game is over, the winner is awarded three points, the loser zero, and in the event of a tie, each team gets one point. After oh, each team is what? Played, all the other... He's uh, what? Loser zero, and in the event of a so tie, you get three, three minute halves. And when the game is over, the winner is awarded three points, the loser zero, and in the event of a tie, each team gets one. They point. get three points. After each team has played all the other teams twice. The team with the most points is crowned oh, champion of the league. They get a big trophy, a parade, okay. and the season is over. Okay, I get it now. Players, I get it now. Sort of. But more on that in a minute. No! The close on the season? No playoffs? Did he just say what I think he just said, bro? Hold on. The is over. There are no playoffs. Sort of. No playoffs? Bro, what y'all got going on over there? Playoffs is like the most exciting thing in sports, fool. Nah, but soccer got tournaments, right? So instead of playoffs, you just got tournaments instead. Let's trade off, let's trade off. I'm on, I'm on, okay. But more on that in a minute. Before the books are closed on the season, there is still one small bit of housekeeping to be done. Housekeeping? Number two, relegation. relegation. We use the German League as an example. Every year, when the German League has concluded and the champion has been crowned, the three teams with the least amount of points are kicked out of the league. <laughs> There's law. The spots are subsequently filled by the top three teams from Germany's second division. And unlike, say, baseball in the U.S. Bro, oh my mama, we need to do that. We need to do that. American sports, we need to do that. NFL, NBA, bro. The SARS NFL teams like the damn Bengals, like the damn, what, the Jets. Get them boys out of there. If they continue sucking and they continue tanking to get a better draft pick and playing sorry on purpose, get them boys out of there and get some XFL teams in to take their place. They'll make everything way more competitive. I like that, man. I like that. They get some swag points for that, man. Y'all get some swag points for that. I don't mute the thing. My teams, the top division. Imagine if the Pittsburgh Pirates or Oakland Raiders had to fight at the end of each season just to stay in the league. Exactly. Instead of coasting to the bottom for better draft picks, they were fighting to the bitter end to avoid the forty million dollar revenue loss. Forty million teams dollars. In the first year alone. Not to mention the fact that in England, nine different teams have gone financially insolvent within five years of relegation. Sheesh. Okay, interesting enough. You're thinking. But what about that whole lack of playoffs part? Exactly. That's what I want to know. Each country also holds an elimination style tournament, referred to as a cup. Dang, but instead of being I held after the nine month league is over, cup games are scheduled in between league games, normally in the middle of the The cup games is scheduled in between the regular season games? Is that what he just said, bro? Is that what he just said? also holds an elimination style tournament, referred to as a cup. But instead of being held after the nine month league is over, Cup games are scheduled in between league games, normally in the middle of the week. Why? What's the bro? Why can't you just have a, the cup games 
after the the season is over? Why you have a turn? Why you have a tournament in between the season? Like that don't make sense, bro. I guess it works, man. One additional perk about the cup system is that teams from all levels, down to semi-professional and even some amateur teams. Oh, it's like Mars Madness in basketball. If they do well and progress, and occasionally even knock off a top team. <laughs> yeah, so we all love underdogs. Games continue you know, until there are only two teams left who play each other in the cup final. After 90 minutes, a cup champion is crowned, they get a trophy, and a parade. And a parade, so, okay. So, between the league and cup games, we get a great picture of who the best and worst teams in each country are. But wait a second, you ask. What would happen if the best teams from each country in Europe all got together and played each other? Good idea. Number four. The resulting competition is the Champions League. So all countries, they did, I like that. I love the competition right there. Everybody and their mama play each other. The best plays the best. That's why we playing right here. I got threw off by the thing that they said no playoffs. It didn't make me think of the tournaments and stuff. This is way better than playoffs. Having the having the best country play the next best country. That's damn near like the Olympics. This is this is the Olympics damn near right here, bro. That's live. Oh, I know them games be live, too. <laughs> I know they be ripping. They said, I know them Spain boys, they be over there. Hey, we from Spain over here, homie. Them France boys be like, hey, man, we from France over here, man. What you trying to do? <laughs> I bet you on my mama they be in there whole fight. The Ultras. I'm stupid. Of course the Ultras be going crazy over there, man. I forgot all about them boys, man. Is without a doubt, the single greatest club competition of any sport anywhere in the world. Any sport? Think of the NCAA Ooh. tournament, but with better quality. See, play, I just said that. Double the fan base and quadruple the enthusiasm. And yes, Europe even has their own version of the NIT as well. Okay. So, through a complex and drawn out process, teams from all over Europe compete just to qualify for this tournament. And starting each September, the top 32 teams are put into eight groups of four. Eight groups each of four? Each team plays the other members of its group two times once at home and once on the road. Come December, the winner and runner up from each group move on to the knockout round. And this is where club standard soccer tournament. is at its standard finest. Tournament. Teams are paired up individually and again play one home and one away game, with the winner from each pair moving on to the next round until only two teams remain. The Champions League final is then held as a single game each year in May. And unless it's the World Cup year, this is the most important soccer game of the year. After 90 minutes, a champion is crowned, the trophy is awarded, parades commence, and, they get a and all the go on break until the Magnus <laughs> okay. fires back up again in August. So, to review, number one, each country has its own league. Number two, the worst teams are kicked out of the league, league? and replaced by the best teams from the next division. Regulation. Number three, throughout the year, each country also holds a playoff type tournament called a cup. Hold on, hold on. Four, the UEFA Champions League is a tournament involving all of Europe and is the most important competition in all of club soccer. It's the most important. But what about the World Cup? So hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you got the World Cup. You got the the damn the Champions League, and then you got the Olympics. Hold on, first of all, what's the point of having soccer in the Olympics in the World Cup? Or like, what's the point of having a World Cup if you have soccer in the Olympics? No, what's the yeah, I said it right the first time. What's the point of having soccer in the Olympics if you had a World Cup? So what's more impactful? What's what what you get more clout winning? Soccer in the World Cup or soccer in the Olympics? Because the Champions League seems the most important. Well, I guess it's objective, huh? I don't know. That's real confusing. You got real, you got three real big, like, you know, championships right there. Because the Olympics will seem like the biggest to me just because it's the Olympics. You know, it only happens every four years. And I think, I don't know, bro. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. But y'all let me know what's going to have more clout, man. And that's the end of the video, man. I'm going to uh, go ahead and study, review my notes after this. And I'm going to come back. An experienced football fan. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to be choosing my team in meantime. Is that the word? And do well. Y'all let me know what's the liveest teams to go for down in the comment section, bro. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I heard about them boys, Neymar. Neymar and uh, Mbappe. I heard about them walking off the field because some uh, one of the refs said something racist to one of their coaches. I love it. I love when players stand up for racial injustice. Give them all the swag points. Neymar, you getting up there in my book, bro. I can't even call you the flop prince no more. I got to, uh, uh, no. I, I re-upgraded him to the flop king, but I'm going to demote you back to the flop prince, bro. You getting up there, Neymar. You getting up there, man. 
Like, comment, subscribe, comment down below, and react to next time. Out.